All right, so today we're diving into this uh, escalating tension between Iran and Israel. Yeah. You know, you sent us this clip from Clubhouse. Right. It's Persian language. Yeah. But there's this expert, and you want us to kind of unpack what they're saying? Yeah, get past the headlines. Yeah, like, what's really going on? Absolutely. Well, it sounds like this expert thinks that this isn't just like a random thing that's happening. Right. It's like a calculated move. Yes, yeah, part of a bigger plan. They even say that, like, the U.S. is basically steering this conflict. Right. And that Israel's kind of like the manager on the ground. Right. It's a... Uh, it's a wild theory. Yeah. They call it a strategy to establish a new world order in the region. Yeah. A new world order that they call the heartland. The heartland. Yeah. From North Africa to the Persian Gulf. Wow. And uh, it runs right in the middle of it. So, like, what's the U.S. game plan here if they're trying to control this heartland? Well, the expert talks about this miniature war theory. Okay. Which sounds a little scary. Yeah, I haven't heard of that before. Yeah, they break it down into three phases. So it's phase one, they say, is exporting insecurity. It's exporting insecurity. Yeah, and they point to, like, 9-11 and all the chaos that followed right. as a way to destabilize the region. So that's, like, the first step. Yeah. And then what's the second step? Phase two is balance of weakness. Balance of weakness. Which is basically proxy wars and weakening key players in the region. Mm. They even mention, like, October 7th. Really? As this big moment for phase two. Okay. But they don't go into any more detail in the clip. So they're leaving us hanging. Totally. And so phase three, this miniature war. Right. Are they saying it's all these smaller conflicts to try to avoid a bigger war? Yeah, like a bunch of smaller conflicts, but, you know, they're still super high stakes. Right. It's all connected. It's all con like a pressure cooker, right? Right. And... It's interesting how this expert uses all these metaphors, like, you know, they talk about childbirth and mm. ripening fruit. Okay. The planning of strategists. Yeah. Like, all this takes time. So they're saying what we're seeing now is all part of this long-term strategy. Exactly. It's not just random events. Not at all. So where do they see this miniature war going? Like, how does it play out? Okay, so they outline a couple of scenarios. Okay. One is a decisive strike. Okay. Like a quick, overwhelming attack by Israel. Wow. But they don't think that's super likely. <laughs> Why not? They say it wouldn't really benefit the U.S. in the long run. Interesting. Okay, so what are the other scenarios? Okay, so there's this tsunami of violence. Tsunami of violence. Which would be like powerful attacks and then smaller conflicts kind of at the same time. Okay. Designed to wear down Iran. So like a multi-pronged approach. Yeah. And the expert seems to think this one is the most likely scenario. Really? Okay. What else? There's also silent erosion, uh -huh. basically just ongoing conflict and internal pressure. To like weaken Iran from within. Uh, exactly. Okay. That's uh, that's a little scary too. And what was that last one? Oh, yeah. The calm before the storm. Oh yeah. That's the one that kind of freaks me out. Yeah. It's like a fake peace uh -huh. before everything blows up. Right. And it's just, it's interesting how this expert keeps saying the U.S. is, like, calling all the shots. Yeah. Like, they're the puppet master. They even say that, like, Netanyahu's a pawn in the U.S. game. Wow. Like, the U.S. wants a powerful Israel. Right. To secure their interests and to basically sideline Iran. And I noticed the expert uses a lot of metaphors. Oh, yeah. Like, they talk about shooting an arrow. Right. And leaves falling in autumn, which I think they're referring to the Iranian month of album right so i feel like these metaphors are giving us some clues definitely about like the timeline of the conflict yeah i think they're saying we need to be paying attention right that things could get worse soon yeah like in the coming days or mm -hmm. weeks right and they're saying that the u.s is basically trying to provoke iran yeah into like making the first move exactly so they have an excuse to escalate it's a scary thought. Yeah. So what we're hearing from this expert is that this isn't just a conflict between Iran and Israel. Right. It's this power grab by the U.S. Totally. And they're saying that we're in the middle of this miniature war, which, honestly, that sounds pretty terrifying. It does. It's, uh, it's a lot to take in. It is. I mean, so what does this all mean for the region? Yeah. It... And what does it mean for the world? It's definitely something to think about. It is, and we're going to keep unpacking this in the deep dive. Absolutely. This is way more complicated oh. than it appears at first glance, so stick with us. There's a lot more to come. Yeah, we're just getting started. You know, it's fascinating how the expert connects this to this much bigger picture. Yeah. Like historical and geopolitical stuff. Yeah, it's like when I first heard this clip, it was just like, Bam. Right. So much information. Yeah. But like now that we're talking it through, 
I'm starting to see how it all connects. Yeah, it is like puzzle pieces fitting together. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the point of these deep dives. You know, we challenge our own assumptions. We look at things from different angles. Yeah, especially with stuff that actually affects us. Right, exactly. And one thing that really hit me was just how blunt this expert is about the U.S. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. they're saying the U.S. is playing hardball. Yeah. And they're going to do whatever it takes to get what they want. No kidding. Like they're saying the U.S. is just acting out of self-interest right. to stay on top. Yeah. They see controlling this heartland as like the key. The key to global dominance. Exactly. It's almost like they have this playbook. Yeah. And they're just going through the checklist. A checklist that's been, you know, decades in the making. Right. I mean, think about it. U.S. involvement in the Middle East. It's a long story. It goes way back. Yeah. And this is just like the latest chapter. Right. But it's happening right now. Yeah. And that's what makes it so unsettling. Absolutely. Like we could be seeing a major escalation. Could even be an all out war. I know. It's heavy stuff. It is. And that's why we can't just accept whatever narrative we're being given. Right. We have to think for ourselves. We have to stay informed. Exactly. And we have to understand the gravity of the situation. So we've talked about the U.S. Right. What about Iran? Yeah, good point. Like, they're not just sitting there passively, are they? Well, the expert actually addresses that. Okay. They say Iran is basically trapped. Trapped? Yeah, on one side, they're being pressured and provoked and targeted. Right. But on the other side, they know if they retaliate, yeah. the U.S. and Israel could use that. As an excuse. As an excuse to escalate things even more. So it's like a lose-lose situation. Kind of. The expert describes it as walking a tightrope. Oh, wow. Trying to maintain their sovereignty and their security. Yeah. But also trying to avoid a major confrontation. Because that could have devastating consequences. For everyone involved. And the expert doesn't mince words about how the U.S. sees Iran. No, they don't. They use terms like submission and regime change. Yeah, those are pretty heavy words. It doesn't sound like the U.S. wants a peaceful solution. I think that's the point the expert's making. Yeah. The U.S. sees Iran as... An obstacle. An obstacle to their goals. Exactly. And they're willing to do whatever it takes to remove that obstacle. And that's a little scary. It is. It's a scary thought. To think that the U.S. might resort to, you know, military intervention or something. Right. And it all comes back to this idea of power. Yeah. The U.S. wants to maintain its dominance. And they see Iran as a threat. Yeah, a threat to that dominance. Honestly, listening to this expert makes me feel a little uneasy. I get it. It's like the whole situation feels so fragile. Yeah. And the potential consequences are just terrifying. I know it's easy to feel overwhelmed when we're faced with stuff like this. Right. But, you know, even in dark times, knowledge is power. That's true. So I think the best way to combat that fear yeah. is to stay informed, right. think critically, yeah. and to talk about these issues. Openly and honestly. Exactly. I agree. The more we understand about what's going on, right. the better equipped we are to make good decisions. To hold our leaders accountable. And to work towards a world that's more peaceful and more just. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. That's what makes deep dives like this so important. Yeah. It's not just about understanding one conflict. It's yeah. about empowering ourselves. To be active participants. And to shape the future that we want. So let's zoom out for a second. Okay. We've talked a lot about this big picture. Yeah, the geopolitical stuff. But what about the human cost of this conflict? Oh, that's a good point. It's easy to lose sight of that. Yeah. When we're talking about things at this level. Right. We're talking about real people whose lives are being turned upside down. Yeah. Families being torn apart. Lives being lost. Communities devastated. And that impact lasts. It lasts a long time. Way after the headlines fade away. And it's not just the direct victims of violence. Right. It's the psychological toll. The fear. The uncertainty. The trauma. That can affect people for generations. Yeah. We can't forget about that. We have to acknowledge it. And address it. If we actually want to create a more peaceful world. So where do we go from here? Yeah, that's the big question. Like, what can we actually do to make a difference? It's easy to feel powerless, right? Oh, when you're looking at something this big. So what can we do? Well, I think the first step is what we're doing now. Staying informed. Exactly. The more we understand, yeah. the better decisions we can make. Right. And the more effectively we can advocate for change. So it's about more than just being informed. Yeah. It's about actually doing something. Taking action. Even if it seems small. Right. Like writing to our elected officials. Supporting organizations that are working for peace and justice. Even just talking to our friends and family about these issues. Right. 
It all matters. Every little bit helps. It creates a ripple effect. Yeah, and when we come together, yeah. our collective efforts... They can actually make a difference. Okay, so we've covered a lot. Yeah. Geopolitical contact. The motivations of the players. The different scenarios that could play out. And the human cost. Yeah, it's a lot to process. It is. But... I think the main takeaway here yeah. is that this isn't just some theoretical discussion. This is real life. These events are happening right now. And they have real world consequences. So for our listener, what's the bottom line? I think the biggest takeaway is that this conflict is much more complicated than it seems. Right. This isn't just some regional dispute. It's about power. It's about control. And ultimately, it's about the future of the world. And it's still unfolding. Yeah. It could escalate even further. So stay informed. Think critically. And keep having these tough conversations. Exactly. The more we understand, yeah. the better prepared we'll be. To navigate these uncertain times. And to work towards a better world. You know, something the expert said really resonated with me. Oh, yeah. It was about truth and reconciliation. Oh, uh, yeah. It got me thinking about how we move forward from conflicts like this. Yeah. How do we heal? How do we build bridges? It's a long process. It is. And it's difficult. But it's crucial. If we want to break this cycle of it violence. create a lasting peace. Yeah, it takes time. And it's hard work. It's so easy to just blame the other side. Right, especially when things are so intense. Yeah, you just want to point fingers. It's a natural reaction. But it doesn't help. No, it just makes things worse. Keeps the cycle going. Exactly. So we have to try to understand. Be sure to empathize. Even with people we disagree with. That's the only way to start healing. And to build a future where peace is actually possible. It's the only way. You know, this expert makes it sound like the U.S. is the only one pulling the strings. Yeah. Like they're the only ones responsible. Right. But is it really that simple? Well... The world's a pretty complicated place. Yeah. There's a lot going on. So maybe we're oversimplifying things a bit. It's possible. But you can't deny the influence the U.S. has. No, absolutely not. And historically, yeah. they've been involved in the Middle East for a long time. For a very long time. And their actions have definitely shaped the situation today. For sure. Think about the Iraq War. Yeah. Afghanistan. All the different regimes they've supported. The list goes on and on. And all those interventions. Yeah. They've had consequences. Some intended, some not. So... Yeah. Other actors have their own agendas. Of course. But the U.S. has played a role. They've created the conditions. For this conflict to happen. Exactly. And this idea of a new world order. Yeah. What does that even mean? What kind of world are we talking about? If the U.S. is trying to reshape everything. What does that mean for the rest of us? What happens to global stability? International law. Human rights. These are the big questions. Yeah. Decisions being made right now. The actions being taken. They're going to have consequences. For a long time. They'll echo through history. So we need to be aware. We need to be engaged. We need to think critically. Yeah, we can't just sit back and watch. We have to participate. In shaping the world we want to live in. Exactly. I know it feels overwhelming. It can. But we're not powerless. We have voices. We can advocate for change. We can speak up for what we believe in. And maybe. Get me. If we work together. Yeah. We can actually tip the scales. Toward a better world. A more just world. A more equitable world. That's the goal. That's what we're fighting for. You know, the expert talked about this new world order. Yeah. But what kind of world order do we actually want? That's a great question. What values should we prioritize? What principles should guide us? And how do we work together? To build something better. Those are questions we all need to think about. Absolutely. Because the future isn't predetermined. It's up to us. It's what we make it. Through our choices. Our actions. Our hope. So keep thinking about these things. Stay curious. Stay engaged. And stay hopeful. I think we've done our part. We've shared what we learned. Now it's up to you. What will you do? With this information. How will you shape the future? That's it for this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.